Hello, hello, all those beautiful faces. How we doing? How we doing? Stephanie checking in with another episode of Class Disruption, disrupting the status quo of education. And before we get into it, go ahead and smash that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified every time I drop a video. And it's summertime, so we are going to be dropping a lot of more content. And I want to know, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What are you feeling? Let's start this conversation. Let's build this community. Let's let our teacher voices be heard because the government, that big old bureaucracy is trying to do a lot of things without consulting us and trying to reimagine this whole landscape of education without us. And that's not happening. All right. So again, smash that like button, subscribe, do all that good stuff and let's get into it. Because, whew, I think I need to say, like, story time. Because summer school, ah, summer school. You know, I always do summer school. I, at first, I just did it because, you know, my son's in daycare. I pay for him to be there. It actually would cost me money to take him out and hold his spot. So I figure, you know, at least until he's in elementary school, let me make some money. And then I realized that summer school is a great space, very low pressure, right? It's not like the school year where they're coming around and evaluating you. Um, you know, low pressure space to experiment, try new fun things. And also the periods are two hours long. So I can really carry out an authentic activity where we look at a text, we dissect it, we analyze it, and then we have a discussion or some type of activity rather than that being spread out and chopped up over a week. Of course, getting the kids back on track, trying to reignite their spark and their love that comes so naturally at such a young age for learning, but somehow dies out by the time they get to high school. So that again, when they start back up in the fall, they might rethink like, okay, I'm on track. Like this year is going to be that year. So all of those things are seem to not be here at this point. I mean, it's day two of some online, all virtual summer school in NYC, and I have not interacted with a single student. Um, I think today I figured out how to post some content that was supposed to automatically be uploaded in there. But um, overall, it's, I just feel like I'm not really sure what's going on. You know, and I'm trying not to blame, you know, the school level admin who's at my location, because from what I can tell, the reason that they're not able to support us or give us more communication is because the DOE is not supporting them or giving them expectations and systems for how to carry out the things we're supposed to be doing. So with that little story time, I thought that we would just hop in, check out, give you a look into what the New York City summer school platform is. So NYC is using iLearn. It's a online MLS. I forget what the M stands for, but it's something learning system. And it's, it's similar to Google Classroom. So it's a platform, you can post announcements, it has a calendar feature. I actually like the way that it looks and a lot of its functionality um, better than Google Classroom. But at the same time, it seems to be missing some of the functions that make my job a little bit easier as a teacher. For example, in Google Classroom, if you want to have multiple sections of the same class and you want to post something to all of those sections, I can just make one post and say, check, 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 go to all these classes. But in iLearn, that feature seems to not be there. I've had to individually go into all 22, yes, you heard that, 22 sections of my class and repost the same announcement re-put in the same calendar event and you know edit any posts that were like they have these auto posts that go up from the the doe that i didn't feel my kids needed so i had to manually delete those um and we're supposed to be getting the content is supposed to we don't have to make anything the content is coming from edmentum so whereas on google classroom i would go in and i would link an assignment either through google docs or google forms or, you know, um, I would link them to um, Edpuzzle. Here, we get all the content provided to us from Edmentum. So let's hop in, let's check out that system a little bit. 
So this right here is how we get into the iLearn platform. You can see everybody's so happy and joyful to be here. And they give us an overview. iLearn NYC is an online learning portal designed to broaden and enhance your school's course offerings. It's available to all K-12 New York City schools. You can use iLearn to complete courses or projects, connect with students from other schools, and if needed, recover credits. iLearn NYC is included include advanced placement, world language electives, and more. And so in the past, I've heard of kids using something called Play-Doh, um, which I wasn't sure how they accessed it, what it was, but I'm pretty sure that's what this is, where they talk about recovering credits, where kids can go in, use this platform to make up classes. So this isn't a brand new thing that they're just rolling out, but it is something that is brand new to be rolling out across all the schools with all these kids using it simultaneously to recover credits rather than just a junior or senior who's trying to graduate and needs to make up one class. Um, and, of, and of course, the teacher's use of that was very limited. It was usually the guidance counselor, one of the APs that set up them up with that. Teachers don't typically have any use of this. So you go here, you sign in, and then it brings you to this home page right here. And oh, look at this. This button right here just popped up. I wonder what it does. And it does nothing. <laughs> okay, so hope, I guess in the coming days they're going to figure that out. Because that literally, I just opened this up and the first time that I'm seeing that. So that must be a recent update since this afternoon. And so you come on the page and they have these announcements here. So the first day of summer school, they said, here's a project to do. Um, I guess this was conditionally released. It's an optional task for students com to complete if they run into issues connecting with their teacher or encounter technical difficulties in the beginning of remote learning. And so when I read this line right here, I'm almost thinking that they were anticipating this to happen. Like they knew that their system wasn't up and running yet. So they're like, all right, let's just come up with this project to get them through the first week. And hopefully by the second week, we'll have it figured out. But at the same time, as a teacher, nobody really ever said anything about this project to me. They just said I should assume that the Edmentum content's gonna be there, it's gonna be ready to go. Um, I wouldn't know how to grade them for this to give them credit because they need to, in the system, have the course completed to get their credit. I'm not sure. So they put out this project and reading this, it's almost like they knew this was gonna happen. So they had this big project out here. But as a student, I don't know if I would find this motivating that we're going to be reflecting on this movement across the country. Anyways, let's get into what it actually looks like for a course. So I go right here and I can say view all my courses. And you can see how many different courses I have. I told you I have 22 different sections of the same U.S. history course and this just has to do with how the information comes because when you teach at summer school you're getting students from many different schools um i think there might be seven eight nine ten different schools of students that are all getting sent to me some students need the first term some students need the second term so it, i guess the best way they can figure to do it so every kid keeps their marker from their school and gets their proper credit anyways Attendance in summer school is always a hassle and it makes things a little bit more difficult on here. So let's go into one of these courses. So this is what the homepage looks like. This is more or less what it looks like from like the student view. I can go into the student view in a second, but you can see these announcements come up. So this is the announcement I posted yesterday, giving an introduction video about myself and what to expect for this summer and then these virtual field trips are something that the doe has set up for every day and they just automatically go up there and then over here you can see it's the calendar i put that we have our daily office hours in here and of course the virtual field trip automatically pops up and so as i was explaining before the thing that makes this really tedious is i couldn't just post this announcement i couldn't just say like new announcement and there's no option to post it to every single class, at least not that I've seen. Oh, what's this down here? No, tables, no. So it 
I had to go in, copy and paste this announcement, rewrite the headline for all my different sections. And same thing for the calendar, which unlike Google Classroom, I can say and I can say, boop, go to all my sections. So that is a bit frustrating. But the really frustrating part is when you hit this content button, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to link you to the Edmentum content. Now you can see I have this Edmentum for US history term two, but I went in there and I manually added this unit. And then if they hit this link, it will take them out. Now mine pulls up the teacher facing side. So it's a little bit hard to know what the student experience is once they get in here. Um, for me, honestly, I was pretty overwhelmed with this. Oh, new student experience. Okay, so this just gives you a little bit more of an idea, but this isn't coming out until next month. So in Plato, it's just, I don't know what to do from here. Um, when I go in, it says that I have no students enrolled in this section. Like, I don't know, does it not catch the students until they start going in and working the modules? Are they supposed to be enrolled in here? It's pretty unclear what to do from here. But like I said, I had to go in and manually add this. It was supposed to be already put in here for me and it wouldn't look like this. It would come up and say, connect to outside content. You would click on that link and it would link you over. So this is what it looks like. Again, I like the look and I like the feel of it. I like how when you do enter into, so I can show you what it looks like here, their virtual field trips. And I like what it looks like, like when you go into the actual field trip. So if I go in here, let me go from student view. So I told you it looks basically the same, right? And so if they were to start the virtual field trip, it would take them in to the content. And I like how it looks. And then you can click through and navigate, okay, to the next page. It, it makes it more of an experience than it is on Google Classroom where you just like link out to a Google form. Um, and it really takes you through slide by slide. And these things are all integrated in here more nicely for a more cohesive experience than you get on Google Classroom, which I like. But again, it's very little instruction has been given to us on how to get to the content, you know, how we should be grading kids, what we should be tracking, what should we use our synchronous or asynchronous learning time for. And funny enough, this is exactly what was predicted would happen. Unfamiliar teachers and 1,045 students per counselor. NYC principals fear virtual summer school classrooms could go empty. And so this was over, what, two months ago? No, a month ago, I'm sorry. So a month ago, principals basically said this would happen. Um, dozens of principals are lobbying the education department to overhaul New York, summer, uh, New York City summer school plan and give individual schools a larger role in summer planning. And you can see that's exactly what's the problem here is that nobody actually knows what we're supposed to do. Like if I was to do, if I was allowed to do something like I would have content up there, I would be interacting with my kids, but we're all kind of on hold for this centralized system to work and to give us direction since it's not working on what to do instead. Um, so again, this wasn't something that just like came out of nowhere. This problem was foreseen and we said it was gonna be the problem. And I just wanted to go back to that idea uh, that was expressed in that Chalkbeat article of how students don't know the teachers. I'm getting kids from all over the city that are sent to me. And of course, if you're unsure about what's going on, who are you more likely to contact? This teacher who's a stranger, or are you more likely to go back to the teacher who you are really close with and have developed a relationship with? And that's what I've seen happen. I've had at least two teachers, one on Instagram and one on Twitter, uh, reach out to me or put out some sort of notification saying like, kids are contacting me about summer school. I'm not teaching summer school, so I don't know what's going on, but they're lost, they're confused, they don't know what to do. So this just goes back to that idea that we see teachers talk about constantly is how important relationships are to teaching, to learning. And 
I mean, I was trying to give the city the benefit of the doubt. Okay, they're going to provide the content so that I as a teacher can focus on supporting, relationship building, and, and really just focus on that student element and supporting them. So again, I was trying to give them that benefit of the doubt, even though myself, I had doubts saying like, okay, if I'm a student and what I'm being graded on is the completion of these modules, am I really going to engage in any kind of like extra, like come to my live session and play a fun game? Or do I really, am I really gonna be invested in this relationship building stuff if it's so separate from the work that's being given to me? Like, I know my teacher's not giving me this work. It's just what it is in the system. So why go to live or synchronous learning? Um, now, my pushback on myself would be that ultimately I do have control. So even if a kid doesn't hit mastery in the system and, you know, I can see, you know, four or five kids are all having trouble. I can say, hey, kids, come to my synchronous learning session. We're going to go over these concepts and then I can let the system know that you've mastered it manually and you can go on to the next one. So there is some pushback on both sides. I, I can see how um, freeing up the teachers from creating the content to really being that supporting and the curating and coming in, uh, especially kids who have IEPs to be there 100% for them that way, it could work. But on the other side, when you totally disconnect the content from the teacher, I can see how it would take away from the child, like from the students drive to engage in that relationship stuff if they're just like all right let me get my work done and be out especially it's summertime so those those are just some of my thoughts on there and uh i also wanted to go through a chalk bee article real quick that gets into some other ideas that i want to hit on that perhaps this might be a foreshadow for the fall who knows so let's check that out chalk bee article just came out five o'clock this evening i was talking to alex earlier and i gave him some insights some of my opinion for this piece uh but i actually think that it gives some good insights into some things that i wasn't necessarily thinking about um so summer school officially kicked off on monday but some 143,000 students enrolled in remote program have yet to start their coursework due to technical glitches and that's so many kids and it's so important to get started right away wrap them in get that excitement get that motivation for the teachers too i mean i feel helpless somewhat um even though i'm trying not to focus on that i'm trying to focus on what i can do and how i can be there it still is a little bit disheartening when you're trying to do work for people who don't seem like they know what they're doing so summer school is being conducted entirely online due to the coronavirus pandemic with a centralized curriculum delivered through a tool called iLearn NYC. And so that's that platform that I showed you, um, which is like Google Classroom. After development developing iLearn about a decade ago, the education department is now redeploying it this summer, but teachers and principals said widespread problems with the platform have kept them from beginning to teach students. And so that's why I said like iLearn is nothing new. A lot of teachers have heard of this thing called Play-Doh that kids do for credit recovery. And that's what this is. I mean, the courses say Play-Doh in them, um, but just the way that they're deploying it is never been done before. So there's a whole different issue. Like you could see I had access, but some teachers still don't have access to their courses. Some students are going in and seeing nothing as well. There seems to be a whole, you know, spectrum of technical difficulties that are going on here. Uh, so you can see this is my little feature right here. Bronx social studies teacher, Stephanie Edmonds said she struggled with access material to access materials for the u.s history unit she's supposed to be teaching on iLearn, which provides access to curriculum materials created by companies like edmentum so i'm using edmentum there are um, different grade levels or if there's not a course in edmentum they'll use other providers um, but that was what i showed you uh before as well so it's like the platform is i learn which is like google classroom and then whereas on google classroom i'm the provider of the content and the lessons edmentum does that providing here so we did find a workaround one of the teachers i don't know how he did but he was in there making it happen to let us access the material but again it's still a little bit unclear about what's the student experience are they able to see this how can i see their progress 
here's another interesting thing is that some teachers don't know if they're actually hired or not. They said they were, but they don't have access to the system, showed up for the training. So that's a little, you know, concerning that you're putting your time and your effort into this. You want to make sure you're getting paid. Um, here's another point that we were talking about is it's limited time, right? We only have five or six weeks for this summer school course so that we're already losing a day or two could prevent some kids who really need to make up some learning from doing that. And I can agree with this. It really does feel like it's widespread clash of miscommunication, last minute thinking and platform issues. Exactly. It is this trinity that of effects coming together synergistically and just all across the city. Um, so it does mention some of the advantages, which would be requiring, instead of requiring schools and teachers to pick from a variety of platforms and develop their own curriculum, a common platform could make it easier to ensure educators have access to high quality virtual materials and could free them out to focus more on supporting students individually. So this is like kind of what I was going for is like that individual support. I would really push back on the high quality curriculum because the lessons themselves are pretty dry, just like, the answers that they're asking for, just like regular um, multiple choice answers. It really goes along kind of that test prep line of things rather than the line that I like to take of like content creation and ownership. But definitely I could see it being a benefit if the teachers really did and were able to get in there, individually support students and still create some of those dynamic and concrete learning experiences and application that makes a classroom come alive and not just like click, next, click, next. Um, but, and this is the big but that is not being fulfilled, when using a centralized platform, it's important that teachers feel confident using it to meet students' needs. And we were at the very last minute, I mean, I received an email the day before being like, oh, by the way, tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday, you're going to have um, PD to learn how to use the online system. I was like, oh, okay, good thing I'm going to be here and available. So super last minute with all that. And even when they were doing the tutorials for us, they were like, oh, when you click here, the Edmentum content will load. It's not linked up yet, but it will be by Monday. I was like, all right, let's hope so. But this was the real big thing that I was like, oh, this would, you know, I'm not into this. Some educators say they're nervous that the education department is planning to use iLearn more widely this fall, fearing it would limit school's curriculum choices. Others, however, say it could give the department more flexibility to deploy staff across schools, meaning that one teacher could potentially have students from multiple schools, an option that could be helpful that given that many students and staff might attend not attend school in person. So again, I'm finding myself on both sides of this issue where I it, there is a very real possibility that we could end up doing remote learning or that some people aren't going to send their kids back at all. Um, some teachers, you know, are in a high risk category and might have to do all online teaching. So I do see this as a good option, especially if you just like it's hard to do it when you will have such a small school, you wanna make sure that you are maximizing the use of each teacher. There's no point in having one teacher for two kids who decide that they don't wanna go into school for virtual learning. At the same time, as we're seeing those relationships that students have with their schools, with their teachers in those schools are paramount to their learning experience. So if they're just like learning at home and thrown randomly with some teacher who also is at home teaching, I don't think it's gonna be as impactful as if each school itself or maybe a very small network of schools that are in the same building work together on their virtual learning. Um, a second high school principal who spoke under the condition of anonymity said the widespread technical issues with iLearn made them skeptical the platform could be deployed seamlessly this fall with significantly more students and worried that it could hamper schools that found strategies that worked for them. And this is this is the part too, is my school has been very proactive since the last month, month and a half of school, brainstorming, coming up with plans, talking about what we did well, what we can improve, how we wanna roll this out next year, what the different possibilities might be. And it would be a shame for the DOE to come in and undercut our, our work and our culture that our, makes our school so successful and so many other schools so successful. 
So I'm worried about losing the progress we made in the spring, the principal said, noting that the school should be given freedom to choose the iLearn platform if they want. I'm worried it won't work if it's mandatory. Exactly. Like it could be an option for schools if that's what they want. But if schools who have put in the work, who do have that culture and those relationships with their students want to do something else, they should be able to do that as well. So a lot of uncertainties right now, a lot of things up in the air, but you know me, I'm going to continue to do what I do regardless. And that is what it's all about. You know, the bureaucracy, the suits, they're going to do what they're going to do. And we got to do what we got to do to push back against that. We got to take the power because you can look at this as, okay, bureaucracy is messing everything up, but I see this as an opportunity, as a space. Let's take up that space and fill it with the things that we think should be there instead of just sitting back and waiting for their less than precise plan of action. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'd love to know how is your summer school going? Is it online? Are you in person? Are you a mix of both? You know, what's the curriculum you're using? How is it different from previous years? How is it the same? Let me know in those comments down below. And before we go, you know I have to say it one more time. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified every time I drop a video, which like I said, they're going to be coming out like hotcakes because it's summer and we're not stressing the summer school stuff. It's summertime. You know what it's all about. You got to stay foolish, y'all.